Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went To Lose Gaming. In today's video, I'll be going over my top 12 time saving tricks in Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact has a surprising amount of text, tricks, and minor optimizations that will add up and streamline your gameplay experience. I've spent at least hundreds of hours playing this game, heck probably even over a thousand hours at this point, and wanted to share some of my favorite time-saving tricks in Genshin Impact. Some of these tricks could save seconds to possibly even minutes in a single gameplay experience. And I guess those seconds end up inevitably adding up to potentially save, I guess, hours over time. This video will be a hybrid between some scripted segments like this, as well as some in-game live showcasing for pragmatic purposes. Number 12, the Kazuha Glide Cancel. Now this one, it's uh, somewhat niche, but it can be actually quite helpful in many scenarios. But basically, you can glide cancel Kazuha's tappy. In order to do it, just tap space space really quick right after you do Kazuha's thing and roughly when he reaches um, near the apex of his um, elemental skill. So when does Kazuha's tap E cancel save time? Well, if all you need is to generate some particles, this is faster. If you don't want to push enemies away with the plunge attack, this is also better and faster. And finally, the plunge attack can actually mess with reactions, so it helps with that. And lastly, you can also more controllably decide when the Freedom Sword and buff procs. And besides, each situation where you only need, for example, just a tap E, you'll save around one-fifth to one-fourth of a second, which can add up over time. Number 11. The next trick is to enhance your artifacts even faster. So there are a lot of artifacts like this one that you'd want to consider bringing up to level 4. Now actually I don't really recommend bringing up a bunch of you know Maiden's Beloveds to level 4 because you know it's Maiden's Beloved. But for the sake of this example let's go for a double crit Maiden's Beloved flower. And normally when you do this you add you know 3 star artifacts once, then you add 3 star artifacts twice, and in order to not waste too much EXP by going, like, see, normally you wouldn't do that, right? You wouldn't add a full six um, three-star artifacts. But instead, you would add one three-star artifact, click on this, and then click on this, and then finally, you would enhance it to level four, and we can see this is not an artifact that we want to keep. Okay, but what about an alternative method to accomplish this? So let's bring this one up to level four, and I'll show you a trick to save a little bit of time. First, you still do the same thing with the first two groups of three star artifacts, but for the third one, you click here, click there, and now you're already ready to click that and you save some time during that little step where normally you would just wait and watch it in hand. So um, we're gonna try this again, but I'm gonna try to do it even faster and further beyond. Let's see, any of these artifacts worth enhancing? Not really. Uh, okay, sure, this one, why not? We're gonna go for double crit. So again, enhance once, and on the second enhance. And there you can see I even added this three star artifact to the queue um, while you know doing this. So I saved another click and then I can move my cursor over to enhance and just click that to bring it to level four. So just like that, you get to save a few seconds, precious valuable seconds every time you enhance an artifact to level four and you even get to make a little mini game out of it by clicking on this and this and this as fast as you can. And when you achieve it, you feel a sense of accomplishment even if your artifact turns out to be poo-poo. <laughs> Number 10, the Boar Blender. Uh, there are probably better names for this, but this is just one idea. Now, unfortunately, I already um, accidentally killed the other boars in that area with uh, a lot more boars. But this one, this team specifically, you have Zhongli to provide a shield, so that way the boars, when they attack you, they don't interrupt you. You have Aloy to not scare them off as quickly. And finally, you have Sayu. She's the one that finishes the blender portion as she spins and destroys them all. And last but not least, you have Xiao, who is helpful for any last bit of boars that remain. Basically, you can just go through and maul all the boars down. Now, unfortunately, um, like I said, I already uh, killed the boars in that area in uh, Mondstadt. But see, this is why I bring Xiao, is just to quickly use his E to destroy any straggler boars that might remain. Number 9, Menu Stuff. 
So first of all, you should really get familiar with the hotkeys here, in particular the ones for opening very common menu things, like for example, um, opening your party. Like that one, I believe is hockey L, and I use this all the time. Now, of course, there are many others. Now, these are less common, at least for me. I never open the Adventures Handbook and all this stuff anymore. But there are many things like J for quest, M for map, B for inventory, and C for character. Of course, you can rebind these to your desire. But there are a few more things that are also extremely useful. For example, configuring the shortcut wheel. Now, there are many here that I recommend. Now, for example, I've changed number one into changing the time. And I actually want to change um, seven into the mail because this way now I can simply use the wheel to open my mail instead of, you know, trying to remember which keyboard hotkey and also um, going through the menu. But this way you can obviously save time because let's say um, normally to change your time, you have to press escape, click time, and now you're here. But instead the menu wheel is much faster. You can see there how fast it was just by hitting tab and up. Same goes for mail. Let's say you get ding for a new mail item. Instead of pressing escape, then mail, right? See how long that took. You can obviously just hit tab and left now for your mail. Number eight, double dash. Every character has internal double dash stacks and cooldowns. However, some character types have much better dash mechanics than others. First of all, double dashing is faster than just holding the sprint key. And second of all, tall males have the best double dash, followed by tall females, I believe, and then probably shown in males. Then finally, shorter females. And then lastly, the child females are the slowest. So oftentimes you will want to switch to the appropriate character model like a tall male character while moving from point A to point B to save those juicy couple of seconds. Number 7, Kazuha Infinite Climbing. Just press XE and then grab on again and you can repeat this every 6 seconds so when you are low on stamina instead of, uh, well you can see there I uh, really mucked that up. I think my finger was on the R key. But you guys get the point right? Infinite climbing with stamina and just like that you can make it to the top. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Number six, double animo. This one is obvious, but it's so important that I wanted to highlight it. It also has a clear optimal combo in my opinion, which I'll talk about. Double animo provides you with animo resonance, which gives you 10% movement speed and lowers your stamina consumption by 15%. This saves you a ton of time in the long run as it not only makes you faster, but it also makes you spend less stamina, thus allowing you to move faster for longer. The uncontested, in my opinion, best double animo combination is Kazuha and Sayu. Kazuha provides unbridled vertical mobility, which is uncontested, and Sayu provides the fastest ground speed in the game. Other notable substitutes are Venti instead of Kazuha, Constellation 2 Jean instead of Sayu, and Xiao since he can also provide some horizontal aerial mobility as well as functioning as the main DPS character for your team. Number 5, just using Sayu. So I mentioned Sayu in the previous one, but she deserves an entire section just for her. Sayu's roly-poly mode provides around a 15% movement speed boost. This is on top of other movement speed bonuses like Animo Resonance. So with Sayu rolling around and Animo Resonance, you are moving around 25% faster than without either of those things. Also, Sayu's roly-poly mode costs no stamina. Now, unfortunately, you don't regenerate stamina during it, but that would just be broken. Also, Sayu is debatably the biggest time save in the game for the least investment. All she needs to be incredibly useful for the overworld is a few levels to around 60 or 70 and a few levels into her elemental burst. This way she will function as the healer for your team. Sayu enables you to catch many critters as well like crystal flies, frogs, lizards, and crabs. And finally she uses a claymore for easier ore breaking when needed. Number 4. Energy Recharge Locations In every region, there are many good spots to regenerate energy for your team. Now, let's say you don't have Raiden's Burst. A popular one in Liyue is right here, where you can use the Lava Troll over there as well as this flower. I personally like to set Teleport Waypoints next to the Primo Geovish app. Now, over in Inazuma, my favorite waypoints to generate energy from is right here. This is my favorite. Right when you teleport to this one, you've got a bunch of the samurai guys right here, all hanging out for you to generate energy off of them. 
Now in Enkonomiya, there are some good locations as well. I believe right here is one of my favorites. Here in Enkonomiya, you can just teleport right here and there is an Electro Lower Troll right underneath you that you can generate energy from. Um, all this stuff is very useful to know for, you know, some energy charging efficiency. Number three, bee hopping. So bee hopping is a great tool to use, especially in the overworld. What it allows you to do once we are almost completely out of stamina is it allows you to essentially maintain your movement speed even when you have zero stamina. So you can actually get to places a lot faster without needing to recharge your stamina. By bee hopping, we can see that we've maintained Kazuha's um, horizontal mobility this entire time just by having no stamina. And finally, I messed up near the end, but we can see we got a huge stretch of infinite stamina with Kazuha right there. Number two, condensed resin and crystal flies. Okay, this one is also obvious, but I still wanted to elaborate on this a bit more. Crystal flies and condensed resin saves you a ton of time. For one, you can essentially stash up to 200 resin and five condensed resins for when you need it, like for farming talent books for a specific character. You can also spend resin this way without losing any efficiency faster than any other method. Are you running late for work? Just create some condensed resin. And of course, you have the amount of times you need to do really repetitive domains. Finally, you're able to be time efficient any time of the day by collecting crystal flies versus when you only have resin. For example, let's say you've spent all your resin but still have 10 minutes to play Genshin Impact. You can go catch some crystal flies to make condensed resin in the future and that will save you quite a bit of time in the future. And of course, don't forget to bring Sayu to catch those crystal flies. Number one, Sayu cooldown reset in domains. Number one, Sayu is back and this is for using Sayu in domains. First of all, not only can you save a ton of time by getting to the key with Sayu, but I'm gonna show you this trick, which is pretty cool. So, you know, we're just gonna clear the domain like we usually do. Now that the domain is clear, you can use Sayu to run all the way to the artifact tree or whatever tree that you're, you know, collecting stuff. You grab it and you quickly mash out of skip. And notice how we use Sayu's whole E to get to the tree. Now, if you have Sayu still in her rolling animation and you click continue challenge, you'll notice that Sayu's cooldown is available again. So you don't actually have to wait for Sayu's cooldown in order to use her E. And there, this way you can get to and from the artifact start and end point very quickly and efficiently. And again, we'll just do it one more time for the sake of demonstration. Go up to the tree, grab your rewards, and then just click retry dungeon or whatever, continue challenge. We're just gonna continue even though we don't have resin. And Sayu's cooldown is back. So there we go. So there you go, 12 of my favorite text tips and tricks to save an unknown amount of time over the long extended period of playing Genshin Impact. What is your favorite time-saving trick in this list or even one that I missed? Did you learn anything new from this? Let me know in the comments below. Also, after implementing all the text mentioned above, I'm certain I've saved a ton of time every day while playing Genshin Impact. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went To Lose, signing out.